This video lecture is meant to cover the information found in Section 3 of Chapter 9, which is all about naming molecular compounds. This material is covered in Objectives 5 and 6 on your Unit 8 Covalent Compounds Objective Sheet. So today in this video lecture, we're going to be learning how to name molecular compounds. Molecular compounds are those compounds that have covalent bonding. The way you can recognize a covalent compound or a molecular compound, which I will use those two terms simultaneously, is that these are the compounds that will contain only nonmetals. Sometimes they have metalloids, but only nonmetals. If the compound contains a metal and a nonmetal combination, then you have to use the naming rules for ionic compounds, which we learned in the last unit. Now, naming molecular compounds is actually a lot easier than ionic, naming ionic compounds. Uh, molecular compounds use prefixes to state how many of each type of atom exist in that particular formula. So we're actually going to jump right into it, and you're going to figure it out just from the names. Um, you, you use this, I think, without even really thinking about it. All right, so the first example, carbon tetrabromide. You see here that there's two elements. There's carbon and there's bromine. So you start out by writing C and Br. Now, there's no prefix associated with the carbon. There's no prefix in front of the word carbon, so that's an understood one. So there's just one of those. Now, tetra is a prefix that means four. So we would rewrite this as C. Let's try that again, not CR. C, B, R, four. Okay. Dinitrogen trioxide. Di means two. Nitrogen is, of course, nitrogen, so this would be N2 trioxide. Three oxygens, O3. There it is. It's quite simple. So the order that the names are given in here and here is the order that you will write them in the formula. So just follow that and you really can't go wrong. Now going in the other direction. I see a PCl5. So here we see one phosphorus. When there was one element to start out with, there's no prefix. So you just start out by writing the name of the element, phosphorus. Now 5, the prefix for 5 is penta. Right? So this is phosphorus penta chloride. Notice. We did not change the ending of the first element. That stayed the same. But chlorine became an ide. So you always are going to change the ending of these, of the second element to an ide ending. The next one down, SO2. There's one sulfur. So we're going to start out by just writing sulfur. I see that there's O2. There's two oxygens. So the prefix for two is di. And then oxygen becomes oxide. Not thinking. So we dropped the Y on that one. So sulfur dioxide. P4S10. Okay, here's an element where we have, or here's a compound where we have four of the first element. So here's where we're going to have to put on a prefix. Tetra is the what is the prefix that means four, and it's the element phosphorus. So tetraphosphorus. Notice, no changing the element name. The suffix there stays the same, but it's tetraphosphorus. And then there are 10 sulfi sulfides, 10 sulfurs. So this is deca, and sulfur becomes sulfide. Okay. So it's pretty simple to work through those examples um, just to write out the notes here, naming covalent compounds, the prefixes. Mono, of course, means one. Di means two. Tri means three. Tetra is four. Penta is five. Hexa is six. Hept is seven. Oct is eight. Nana is nine. And Deca is ten. All right. So when you're writing the names, the first element name, you never use a suffix. You never change the ending. You will use a prefix 
if you need more than one of them. So if, if the first element, if there's only one of them, you just don't bother with the mono. If there's two or more, then you have to use the die, tri, tetra, whatever it is. The second element name, you'll use the id suffix, and you will always use a prefix, even if there is one of them. Okay. The example here, carbon monoxide. One carbon, one oxygen. This is carbon monoxide. So we put the mono in front of the second element, but not the first. When we're writing formulas, you will use the subscript based on the prefixes in the name of both the um, first element and the second element. So that's pretty straightforward. You saw those examples in. So this is your chance to go ahead and put this into practice. Um, this is the homework, so go ahead and, and pause the video. Try your hand at these problems and come back when you're ready to check your work. All right, hopefully you have uh, taken the chance to try these on your own. Uh, first, we saw that you had to confirm that we had two or more nonmetals before you uh, went ahead and used these rules. Of course, all of these problems on this worksheet are covalent, um, but in the larger scheme of things, you'll want to definitely stop and ask yourself, are these covalent or are they ionic, before you go ahead and name them. All right, let's take a look. P308, we have tri for the three, phosphorus, oct oxide. Next one, we have carbon, tetra, chloride. Here we have tetracarbon, nana, we're going to stick the A in there to help us have a vowel to bridge the prefix to the actual element name, which is hydrogen, will become hydride. And then here we have boron disulfide. 